Holy cow. The amount of lies that was put in the comment section of my last video about the five facts about mobile homes is unbelievable. And we're gonna be addressing those big five lies today. It's Take a Tip Tuesday. Hi, my name is Christina Smallhorn. And about a month ago, I put out a video about the five facts of mobile homes. And it was a huge success. But the comment section was riddled with really bad information that was being given out. And I realized after I started reading this more and more that a lot of people believe these things because they've been said for so long that it becomes true in their minds. So I was able to meet with Gary Millett, who owns a manufactured home uh, showroom right here on Airline Highway. And he was kind enough in his super Cajun accent to explain the five myths and address each and every one of them. Before we even do that, I do want to say I was not paid by Gary to do this video. I did not pay Gary to do this video with me. And I know that in the comment section of the last video, they said, how much is she getting paid to do these kinds of facts? I'm just doing it to educate the public. And that's all this video is about is to tell you the five biggest lies that are told to you about manufactured homes. And I'm going to address them right now. All right. Why don't you tell everybody who you are? My name, I'm Gary Millett senior and I'm the owner of a manufactured housing retail. I am also a commissioner for the state of Louisiana that regulates manufactured housing. I have been in this business now for 42 years. So I have learned a lot about the construction of our homes. There's a lot of things, a lot of myths that people uh, talk about our, our product and they're all false. The very first one is that mobile homes attract tornadoes. That's a myth, folks, is the way they're anchored today. Mm -hmm. There are more anchors on a manufactured home. This house, as heavy as it is, when we put it together, okay, we got two sessions we put together. This house will weigh about 70,000 pounds. We put it together and we anchor the center of the house, we anchor the sides of the house, and we anchor the the horizontal anchors. So there's no uplift on this. I promise you, this house will withstand more wind than a house that's built on pillars. A common theme when it came to the comment section of the manufactured homes was the fact that the type of building materials. And I know for myself that I, I thought that a lot of the building materials were inferior. But the way that Gary explains the type of building materials that are used in manufactured homes and what guidelines they have to follow in order to get that manufactured home put on a lot is a little bit more than a lot of people think. And of course the guidelines have changed over the years. But like I said, Gary explains it best in his way that he can explain it super passionately. Well, first off, we have, there's three categories of manufactured homes. You probably can relate to what I'm gonna tell you better if I do it in automobiles. Chevrolet, Cadillac, Mercedes. And materials that are put in those homes are dependent upon which one you pick. You as a customer, if you come to me and you say, listen, this is my budget. Well, I'm gonna take you in a home that fits your budget. It might not have the same materials as the Mercedes or the Cadillac, but it's gonna have materials that HUD approves. The other thing about this home and a lot of them is the, the windows, all thermal paint windows, just like you would put on your site built house. You get appliances and all of these cabinets are real wood, okay? So don't tell me about inferior, okay? There's no such thing in our industry. When you go back to the comment section of my previous video about mobile homes, a lot of people mentioned the insulation and their utility bills. You had some saying their utility bills were pretty low and you had some saying that they were a nightmare. Well, Gary and I went ahead and discussed that as well. You know, you're going to have a utility bill the whole time you're living in this home. If you don't add that insulation at the time it's being built at the factory, you can't put it in, folks. That's why we strongly suggest you do it. Like I said, this house has R30. It has R19 insulation because of the 2 by 6 sidewall and R22 in the floor. So people couldn't blow in insulation after the fact? No. No. They now you can put it, it in the bottom. You can put it in the bottom, but yeah. not in the... But no, unless you got a place to get in the attic and there's, there's no. Well, that's something I learned today. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, 
was the comments about it related to the type of people that own manufactured homes. I want to address this first in the fact that there are many people that live in manufactured homes. And uh, this hurt me because uh, people are people and you never should judge a book by its cover. I know this sounds super preachy, but for goodness sakes, where a person lives does not make them the person that they are. And Gary addresses this as well. Well, first off, I would never ever say that a customer of mine, you know, was a deplorable. Uh, listen, I make my living selling customers. They can't afford to go out and buy a site built house. That's why they come to me. And if they ever tell me they want to go buy a site built, I say, good luck, go do it. You'll never do it for the price of my home. My price per square foot is probably $100 a square foot less than you building it. What? And that's, and that's going to determine how you build it. Because if you build it the way this home is built, that's why the customer comes to me. Because I can help them to get in a home at a much more affordable price. Everybody can't afford a Cadillac or a Mercedes. You know, they just can't. So if they can't afford that, folks, they come in here. This is going to be their biggest investment they make in their life. And I'm telling you, that's all a myth about people who buy manufactured homes or deplorables. No, no. This home, you just don't want to. I mean, cars go down in value. Mobile homes go down in value. It's a car you sleep in. I mean, that's what you're dealing with. So if you want to rent one, that's fine. That is totally false. It surely depends on how well you take care of your home. I mean, listen, you drive off the, the car lot in a Mercedes and they'll tell you you lost $10,000 just for driving it off the lot. That's not the same thing with our homes. What's the demand? That's what regulates the price of any home. Because I've seen some site builds that, that started out at $150,000 or $200,000. And when it got time to sell, God, it was terrible. Okay, so now we're on lie number five. And this is not true of every single area, and it is true in some other areas. But they say that you'll never gain value on your manufactured home. In some areas, they say if you take off the tongue and you lay it on a foundation, it's considered real property and no longer personal property. Here, you can finance uh, a manufactured home with an RD loan or an FHA loan, and it's easy. In other areas, it's not so easy. So make sure you do your research first before you decide to purchase a manufactured home and see what the resale value is in your area. You can always contact a real estate agent. If you're thinking about selling your manufactured home and you do want to gain value, I'm going to make a video in the future covering the best ways you can gain the most money out of your manufactured home. So be on the lookout for that. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that one. You know, there's a lot of people that will buy a manufactured home and put it on a piece of property. Mm -hmm. And it automatically, automatically increases the value of the home with the property. Oh, yeah. And I can tell you for a fact, there's a lot of people that did that and ended up selling the land and the home for a lot more money than they had in it. So there's your, there's your proof. I promise you, it's happening all the time. It's like you can buy a base model car yeah. or you can buy a base model house. You can add upgrades. I just did a video about uh, comparing a house between 200 and 250,000, and it all came down to a little bit of extra size and a lot more extras when it came to the upgrades. You know, it's this is no different than any other type of home, and that is the biggest thing I want to get across. The biggest lie is that this is not a real house. It 100% is a real home. It is an asset and it can be resold if it's taken care of at a profit. And now for a few bonus tips. This is one that came up not only in the comment section, but I've heard this for many years, and it was about the type of glue that they use to put together the manufactured homes. It was told to me that it attracts rodents and pests, and especially German cockroaches. But let's go ahead and hear what Gary has to say about this particular lie. Again, another myth. Uh, folks, listen, big lie. There's, there's, no, there's no question. Housekeeping plays a big deal here. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've lived in four different manufactured homes in my lifetime. And 
Did we have them? Did we have roaches? Yes. Guess what we did? We sprayed. I've lived in a house that had. Okay? You can't keep them out. They're coming in. Especially in Louisiana. You gotta have some kind of pest control. Or if you do it yourself, just do it regularly. But that's all a myth, folks. Because remember, the same materials in this house are used to build a site built house. Ooh, you know what I want to talk about? What? You mentioned that people oversizing oh, their air, air conditioning air. units yeah. for the mobile homes. And the other thing is they not only put the air conditioning out on the outside, they end up sticking mm -hmm. a window unit in. Yeah. So tell them why that's a bad idea. Well, first off, in a manufactured home, the manufacturer gives us the BTU rating. The BTU rating is the size that the ductworks can take in that house. Mm -hmm. Now, site built houses use 500 uh, BTUs as a guideline for the for each 500 square feet. In our deal, it's not that way. Because we put so much insulation, we'll have a 16 by eight on this house. This is a 32 by 64, 1800 square feet. This house will take a three turn air. Now, if you want a four turn air, I won't sell it to you. Okay, because it's going to void your warranty. You're going to have mold. Okay, I'm telling you, it's going to happen. If you oversize the air conditioner, this is what it does. It turns on, cools the house down quick, and turns off. Okay, let's just say you got your uh, air conditioning, your thermostat set at 68. Okay, and the dew point outside is 70. Okay, and, and guess what's going to happen between the walls that you won't see? Just like that glass of ice water. Having the, the condensation on the outside of it, you're going to have condensation in your walls. Mm -hmm. But you won't see it because it's in the insulation. It's between the sheetrock, the insulation, the OSB that's on the outside. That's your, that's your barrier. And then you got your vinyl siding or your hardy plank, whichever one you want to put on the house. Mm -hmm. It's going to have water. I promise you. Yeah, Thank you for listening to us. Yeah, I appreciate your time today. Thank no you problem. so much. Gary Millett is definitely passionate when it comes to manufactured homes. He's been doing it for a long time and he's quite a character. If you want to know more about Gary Millett, I will go ahead and put his information in the description. But if you'd like to know more about manufactured homes, I will go ahead and put the playlist for manufactured homes right here. If you want to know more about modular homes, I'll go ahead and put a video right here. But make sure you like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss any of my information when it comes to any kind of home. My name is Christina Smallhorn, your real estate whisperer, and I tell you all this because you matter.